it's the way to go. Eat a fig, not a pig, let your kindness show. If it's your wig or a jig or a swig, do you dig it big? It's the way to go. It's Big Fat Vegan Radio. When something's fat, there's a lot to show. It's gotta be fat to help the movement grow. Making fat loud chat that won't be flat. It's fat. And here's our show. It's Big Fat Vegan Radio. That vegan glow Like a drag queen Colleen Patrick Goudreau I'm a YouTube beacon Cooking up good eating <sighs> Veganism makes me glow It's Big Fat Vegan Radio Alright vegans All together now When something is fat that's There's a lot to show Like it's gotta be fat, fat To help the country grow, grow. Make it fat Love chat That won't up, be flat big. It's big. fat vegan. It's the way to go It's Big Fat Vegan Radio Hey everyone, welcome to Big Fat Vegan Radio. We're podcasting from San Francisco and New York City to discuss veganism in all of its glory. I'm here with Ben Strothman, otherwise known as Honey LeBronx, everyone's favorite vegan drag queen. And I'm here with Laura Yaz, vegan writer, entertainment know-it-all, and laundry folder. Ah, that's why I just turned my, my <laughs> video off. Like folding little baby jammies. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> You don't have your video on. That's not fair. I can't see you. I don't you. have my video on. Let me turn my video on. I can't on. see I'm you sorry. applying lip gloss. I'm sorry. Here we go. What if I turn my video on and I just had a full beat and lashes? That would be amazing. Big overdrawn lips. That would be like, amazing. Well, hello. You know, my, my, you know, my bestie Colin, he said that whenever you post a comment as Honey LeBronx on Facebook, he pictures you sitting at your laptop in full drag. Yeah. <laughs> You guys can check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube by searching for Big Fat Vegan Radio. And you can follow along with our show notes at BigFatVeganRadio.com. Hello. Good morning, Ben. It's not Ben. It's Honey right now. Oof, good morning, can you Honey. handle it? Can you handle it? I can't. I can't Touch it. this skin, Honey. Touch all this skin. Okay, I'm not doing that. Okay. <laughs> That's a reference to Paris no. is burning. No. If you if you haven't already seen Paris is Burning and you like drag queens, you just need to watch Paris is Burning because so many things that you will ever hear a drag queen say were originally said in Paris is Burning. You own everything! Could you imagine the responsibility of owning everything? You couldn't complain about anything. You'd be like, well, these roads are really shitty. The maintenance... Oh, oh, I guess, I guess it's my fault. I guess I better take care of it. Yeah. <clears throat> if I don't do it, no one's gonna. It does sound like a burden. You would need to delegate. Yeah. It really is a virtue to learn how to delegate. So, Laura, Truly. what did you have for dinner last night? You know, I had pizza. Mm-hmm. Pretty dull. Cheeseless pizza? No, no, I went to plant-based pizza. Mm -hmm. I had pepperoni pizza. You're so lucky. Um, I am. It's really true. And um, <clears throat> this laundry is damp. It needs to go back in the dryer. You're damp. You need to go back in the dryer. This is really bumming me out. Yeah. That's a bad I feeling. I hate that. I hate that. It takes a while before you accept that laundry is damp. At first, you're I like, know. No, it's just that one little shirt. No, it's just cold. I'm it's sure just it's cold. Fine. It's just chilly. Yeah. And it's just my hands are sensing moisture. That's interesting. And then you get to a sock that's like just wet. And you're like, never mind. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, maybe you can see if you can pass off uh, damp laundry today and see if maybe they'll just not say anything. <laughs> it's all right. I got a lot going. I can just, uh, I have a lot of loads going. It's fine. So for dinner last night, I'm, I, I hate to admit this. I, um, it was one of those days where like, I was just like kind of ADD and laser focused yet completely unfocused and so I'm getting a lot of work done. In short, I got my Evernote Scan Snap scanner for my birthday. Mm -hmm. It's a $500 multi doc multi page document scanner. Like I, I I'm just going to sound like such a geek if I try to explain it. But I'm like literally going around my entire bedroom just grabbing stacks of stuff that have been cluttering up my room forever, feeding them through my scanner, and then throwing them away. And I am freeing up so much space. But so I was kind of like on this kick where I was doing that. So I kept putting off eating until finally I'm like, oh, well, 
I guess this is my last chance. And then I went and I met a friend a couple of blocks away. He wanted to meet for drinks and see some drag show. So I met him and um, went to some drag show and saw this oh, I saw this really uninspired drag queen. I felt bad for the drag queen's mom because the mom was there with like all her friends. And the really? drag queen's like, yeah, my mom is in the audience. Woo! And the mom was like clapping like, that's my baby. As if... Like, because that's your baby, automatically she can do no wrong. Automatically she's the best drag queen there. Like, if you ask that mom, like, who's your favorite drag queen? She'd be like, so-and-so. I'm not going to say her name. Um, I've also never heard of her. Well, no offense, but frankly, that's what the mom should say. Well, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Good. But it's like, has that mom ever seen Bob the Drag Queen? Has that mom ever seen Bianca Del Rio? Has that mom ever no, seen No, I'm me? sure that mom doesn't know what good drag is. This drag queen, first off, was hosting a show. Um, the way that this club does it, they have this pre-show song that they play. It's Dream Girls. Like, it's like the opening theme to Dream Girls. And then at the very end, they have this pre-dubbed message, like, and now, give it up for the host of your evening, Silence. And then Person. that's normally where the host of the evening would announce their name and introduce himself. You hear it now, give it up for the host of your evening, and then silence. And then, like, a minute later, you hear a, a drag number start, but the drag queen is nowhere to be seen. Like she kind of Some drag queens do this thing where they'll let the music play for, like... 30 seconds before they come mm -hmm. out on stage. It's Yeah, sure. I know what you're talking done about. Done to death in Milwaukee and it's stupid. Um yes, I'm calling most of the Milwaukee drag scene stupid. Um a lot of regional drag is stupid. Uh and then she comes it's out on stage. Fair enough, and, it's Milwaukee. And she does a number which like the it's not a mix. It's not like a mix where it's like I'm going to do this number and then it goes into this and then it goes into this. It was just a number straight through, which you better be fierce if you're going to do a number straight through. But all she was doing was some half-assed kicks. Yeah, and you better be fierce. It better be like some, like I got a girlfriend out here. Yeah. She does Nicki Minaj, like wicked rap songs, and she does them straight through, but it's wildly impressive. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah exactly. crazy Nicki Minaj songs. So this girl, she's just like kind of like half-assing a song. And then when she's done, she's just like, <sighs> <sighs> like breathing <laughs> in the microphone and like, just assumes that as long as there's a microphone in her hand, people are entertained. <laughs> and so just, it's just like doing a really bad job hosting the show. Mm. And then like, like you, are you guys enjoying yourself? Like make some noise. No, don't tell us to make some noise. How about you do something? And if we like, we'll make noise. And that's how you'll know that you're doing a good job. I know. You know? That would be like me going to school and taking a test. And like, yeah, give me some A's. Give me some A pluses. If you, if you love me, if you're feeling me. No, you know what? I'll feel you when you study hard and you turn it out on a test. That's when that's I'll funny. I just you. had that conversation. Really? The other day with a little one where I was basically like, if you want so-and-so to say I love you instead of screaming, do you love me in their face? Maybe you should say, I love you. <laughs> That's funny. They're already screaming, do you love me? <laughs> oh, I love Because nobody it. likes that. It would have been funny if her mom responded, do I what? That's <laughs> no, a it was two kids to each other. That's a Fiddler on the Roof reference. Um, but anyway, so then she does some half-assed hosting, hardly even hosting, and then she does one more number, which is just equally lackluster. I couldn't tell you which number was which. And then she's like, all right, we're going to take a short <laughs> intermission. And I'm like, what? You did two numbers and you're taking an intermission already? It's the way this bar does it. They say that the show will start at 11. On the poster, it says 11. But then when you ask them what time the show starts, they say 11.30 or midnight. But then the show doesn't start till like midnight. Uh, until like 12, uh, 1230. So the Ooh. shows start on average 90 minutes late. Oh, that's terrible. And then I once they that. start, you do, they do two quick numbers back to back. And then they say that they're going to take a brief intermission. And when you ask a drag queen how long the intermission is going to be, they say like, we're going to take a 10 minute intermission. The intermission usually lasts 30 to 35 minutes. And the reason the bar does that is they want to get everyone in, but now they want everyone to stop and go get drinks at the bar. Of it's course like, they do. Yeah, I like, get it. Why not just have your cocktail waiter go around and get drink orders from the audience while they're enjoying the show? Well, that makes <laughs> a lot more sense. But and then the don't second cloud the issue with logic. So it's like, if you really want to see the show, like you're expected to stay there until like two in the morning for an 11 p.m. show. Ridiculous. Raw. Ridiculous. So, f so anyway, Cinderella. that's why I didn't have dinner last night. 
That's why I didn't have dinner last night because I was out at some show. So by the time I realized that I wanted to go to Domino's and just get a pizza, they were already closed. And so Aww. I had not had a hot meal. And oh, it you just... wanted pizza as well. I'm sorry. Yeah. And my neighborhood is just not a 24-hour, like, order food kind of neighborhood, which bothers me. Because when I lived in Astoria, uh, you could get anything girl, you want until 4 a.m. 4 a.m. No, that's true. I, when I lived in Astoria, there was a bodega mm. on the corner where I could, where they literally had all of the Go Max Go candy bars. No. And it was 24 hours. In so, like, I could get a Twilight any time of the day that I was oh in the mood. God. Well, I'm glad I don't have that. That's the last thing I need. I have fallen hard off my gym. Oh, yeah. Thing. When I found those, I went crazy. I've not been to the gym now in, like, two weeks. Um, I literally sat outside the gym one day, and I was like, um, oh, you know what? I'm not going in. Well, I had a good reason for that. But, um... I so I needed a hot meal. So the my really only option at this point, I went down to the bodega and I ordered curly fries, and I covered them in uh, um, mustard and ketchup and Frank's Red Hot and some go veggie parmesan, which sounds like oh that'll be great. It was it was alright. I um, haven't had the go veggie parmesan. Oh, it's everything. Really? Oh, it's it's the best parmesan there has ever. Well, that ever is a glowing been. review. The best Parmesan there's ever been. Didn't you get it in your vegan cut snack box at one time? Yeah, you know what, though? Hmm. I mean, ugh, I don't want to say anything bad about vegan cuts. I'm sure it was a fluke. The seal was broken on mine, so it had gone uh, bad. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it was just like a shipping, packing thing. Well, you know, you whatever it something. happens. You should, I'm sure they would have replaced it for you. Well, of course, but I didn't bother. <laughs> yeah, it was an entire container of it. It will last you. That thing cost maybe like, I don't know, five bucks or something. It will last you ages. Um, really? And- yeah, you know, I'm just in this place where I'm just putting nutritional yeast on everything. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. instead of Parmesan, I just put nooch and like a little like uh, like coarse salt. It's yeah. like better than Parmesan ever was. Yeah, well, I I totally agree with you there. Except I disagree. It's you. It's just not better than the go veggie parmesan. Um, mm, okay, yeah, well, that's good. That that's too, a good review. Huge. That makes me want to try it. That's a um, good review. You know, I get the cheeseless um, thin crust pizzas at Domino's, and what I used to do is just drop off a bag of Daya, but that adds like six dollars to my order, no and kidding. I can't eat a whole pizza if it's got Daya on it because then suddenly it's really filling. But what I do now is do they just... use the whole bag too? They should only use like half a bag. Mm, I usually drop off the whole bag, which is way too much. But then I'll split it with someone, or it I'll is eat half. way too much. Yeah. Well, so I can use half. I can use half a bag. But what I do now instead is I just I just shake um some Parmesan on it, and it's it's really good. Oh, that's good. See, that's the nicest thing to me about um, plant based pizza. And I have to say, they must be doing well because every time I'm in there. I just can't. I can't say enough good things about that place. The surface is so good, and it looks great. They keep they keep making it cuter and cuter. Like last time, I, we, last night when I was there, I used the bathroom, and the bathroom's like sort of past the kitchen and in the back, very sort of New York City. Mm-hmm. And they have feet footprints painted on the floor oh. that lead you to the bathroom. And then when the footprints end, there's like this big painted stuff on the wall, and then you go inside, and they have like they like insulated the bathroom with all their recycling, and it's like really cute. Cute. You can't yeah, say right? enough good things about plant-based pizza. So I imagine that you have plant-based pizza in your face saying, do you love me? <laughs> yeah, no, I do have them on my favorites list in my phone, though. Oh, I love it. Yeah, but um, uh, they don't use they don't use too much pizza. That's my favorite thing about their – they don't use too much Daya. That's my favorite thing about their pizza. They use just the right amount. Oh, perfect. It is like they have it down. Yeah. And their sauce and their crust is great and – I mean, I don't mind too much day. I mean, there is such a thing as too much anything, but I don't mind too much day uh, on a pizza. See, I do on a pizza. I feel like it sticks to the roof of my mouth, and yeah. I it don't like the it. The problem is after it's just going to be so filling. I can eat an entire thin crust, no cheese, large pizza from Domino's because it's not a lot of food. It's tiny. It's a tiny little matzah bread with sauce on it. Yeah, I can eat that much pizza too. Yeah. Absolutely. But if you put day on it, you can you can't even have Rich. half a pizza. It's just suddenly yeah. you're you're getting so full. Suddenly it's rich. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, So there's that. We have discussed food. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about Michael Heron's show rather than waiting to acknowledge it at the end of the show. Fine, let's do it now. I wish I had been there. Yeah, I just need to tell you guys, you have to check out michaelheron.com. If you do not already know the Michael Heron from his work, um, you know, he did our theme song, um, 
And uh, that that would be like saying Mozart wrote the Moonlight Sonata. I mean, Michael Heron helped us with the song, but like, oh my God, you got to check out his work. It's just brilliant. I mean, his this show was called Tentative Armor. I did the photo for the show. Not the graphic design, which makes the photo look as cool as it is, but I did do the yeah, photo. Yeah, it's a really cool, that's a really cool poster. Um, I have to say, Michael Heron was being such a little brat during that photo shoot. Really? <laughs> for as awesome as that photo came out, he was impossible to work with but he acknowledges Diva. this so he was he was just like oh i'm kind of snapping and yelling at you while you're just here doing me a favor aren't i and i'm like yeah it's it's fine yeah no big deal uh i'm like hey when i'm the subject i hate sitting for a photo shoot as well so i totally feel you yeah um, i don't like it either it's not, but it's a, it's yeah it's tough work but he um uh the show it's just like it's equal parts performance art monologues singing and original music composition. He had mm-hmm. a three-piece string, um, I want to say a three-piece string quartet, but that would not be a quartet. A three-piece string trio, a cello, violin, viola, backing him up. Um, he had a piano, synthesizers, a guitar. Um, the show was so funny. Um, I brought a friend, because I'm I'm kind of seeing someone now. What? Yeah, did I not mention this? Alert the presses. I knew you liked somebody. Um, yeah, I'm, it's, 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 it's new, so I don't know if it's time to talk about it. Does um, he know that you're seeing each other? Oh, we're, it's, it's, we haven't called it anything. Like, we're I'm very careful kidding. to avoid the boyfriend label or the dating or like the, I mean, even to acknowledge it and say like, yeah, we're dating. It, it, I think we will both agree what we're dating. I mean, like. You could say seeing each other. Yeah, I've stayed the That's night at his good. place. He stayed the night at my place a few times. Um, oh, he is so many things. He is so wonderful. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name him here, but um, yeah. And you know, the fun thing about it, I will say this. The fun thing is I'm dating someone's dad. He, what? He has He's two children. Oh. His son is 20. His daughter is 14. God, we're old. He's 50. And, oh, he's just delicious. He's dreamy. It's, it's and... so funny to me that we are, I mean, that that's happened to me a bunch of times. There's all these guys that, like, are age appropriate for me to date, and they have teenagers. I'm old. Age appropriate? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know um, what I mean? Well, I'm 35 now. I mean, he's he's 15 years my senior. Which is funny because he's 50, I'm 35, his son is 20. It's just like, it, it kind of feels, I don't know, it feels very generational. But um, yeah, we just really click. We really hit it off. And then I looked up his birthday and I'm like, oh, of, I think his birthday is September 17th. I think that's it. Um, he's a Virgo. Okay. I've been waiting for my Virgo to come along one day. I'm a Pisces, so supposedly Virgo was my most compatible sign. And you know, for a long time now, I've had it bad for Mr. So-and-so who doesn't love me, and I've had to deal with that. Yeah, I know all about that. And I kept assuming that that, that Mr. So-and-so was a Virgo. He wasn't. He was a Sagittarius, and it just was not whatever. Oh, interesting. Um, but this guy is a Virgo, and so um, and he's not vegan or vegetarian. Perfect. Well, that sounds like a problem. Per- not at all. It's perfect. Why would I be dating a vegan? Who gets converted in that situation? I guess that's a good point. And um, very PETA attitude of you to have. But he's very like, oh, so now, so now, why are you vegan? Okay, well, so now, why not eggs or why not dairy? And he's he's legitimately interested in the answers. Good. Um, and um, and you know, we had we had this conversation um, for uh. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just checking my phone. We had this conversation like when we were out with friends and they were having drinks and whatnot. So I was kind of like kind of getting into it. But I was like, well, if you really want to talk about it, we'll talk about it another time. Mm-hmm. But um, he watched Forks Over Knives. And when it was done, he was like, oh, he's like, this is something I could do. And um, yeah, so I'm um, yeah. Did you show him Forks Over Knives? Yeah, I told him he should so check it out. I'm bored by that movie. I, I don't like it at all. What's that? I don't like Forks Over Knives. Um, Why not? I don't know. I just think it's boring. Well, I mean, it's it's for certain people who really aren't aren't looking at it from an ethical point of view. They just want to know, like the 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 the. Hey, I will. Yeah, say it's this. good for people who aren't ready to handle the animal information. Yeah, I'm gonna say this. You just folded a shirt that looks exactly like a dress that Bob the drag queen made. The polka dots. Yeah. Is Bob it pajamas? Has I I have a shirt, a dress that looks just like that, but um. 
Yeah, so for people who aren't, like, into it for the ethical reasons, I think Forks Over Knives is a great uh, introduction. Plus, I will say this. Forks Over Knives is a, what, 90-minute documentary based on the China study. Have mm-hmm. you read the China study? It's a dense medical text that they somehow managed to turn into a palatable, interesting documentary. So You know what it is? I, this is probably it. I'll say this. Forks Over Knives does not in any way represent why I am vegan. Mm-hmm. So I don't connect to it. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, Vegucated to me mm-hmm. is basically the answer to the question someone asking me, why are you vegan? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I would so much rather show them something that I'm like, this is me. This is what I'm about. Yeah, absolutely. But in this guy's case, I, I think the reason for um, – the reason he ended up watching is he had some health concerns on behalf of a friend. And I yeah, said, Yeah, no, oh, no. Well, look, look, it's not about – it's not – look, it's not – I gave it to my dad because he's got yeah. diabetes, you know, and yeah, he yeah. controls it all through his diet because he doesn't um, – take any medication for his diabetes he's gotten all his numbers down by just changing what he eats Mm -hmm. and so i was like oh this will be right up my dad's alley this is all about that you know Mm -hmm. i mean i don't mean to bash the movie i just don't like it as much as vegetated no well actually vegetated is the next one i have him watching um he watched forks over knives and i love i love when you're talking to a non-vegan about documentaries and they come back with did you see food inc and i'm like hmm I know that Disney movie. Yeah, basically. Yeah, Pixar made that, right? Yeah. Wasn't Adele Dazeem in that? Oh, you um, mean the G-rated version of everything exactly. about our food? But no, it wasn't even Food, Inc. It was some other movie that he was talking about. But um, I told him that the next thing he should check out is Vegucated. And he's 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 into it, so he's going to oh, check good. it out next. I keep running into Brian Flagellum at uh, Veggie Girl. Oh, really? Yeah, we keep running into each other. We're both stuffing our face with chicken fingers. We're like, hi. <laughs> How's Cute. it going? Yeah. So um, we want to get into some uh, hisses and purrs? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Hold on. Let me just get my script up. Mm-hmm. Do you want to purr first? Yeah, I would love to purr. I don't know that I'm going to make much sense of this because it's so... Um, this is from um, Healthline News, healthline.com. Um, this is like... Uh, this is, this is, um, it's like such a dense, talk about a dense medical text, like the China study. This is basically, I read this article (laughs) and I still don't understand how to explain this to you guys, but basically here's the, um, the, the headline of the article is could a liver in a test tube mean the end of animal drug testing? Now, I just, I I know very little about animal testing, so I basically just assume that they inject animals with whatever, and then they observe the behavior or observe, okay, did it cure the animal's cancer or did it not cure the animal's cancer, or they injected the mouse with such and such and then it died or it didn't die. I, I don't really know enough about animal testing to know how it works, but apparently... One of the big things that they look at when they do animal testing is they inject the drug into the animal and what does the animal's liver do with that drug? And then they basically take a look at the animal's liver to see is its liver um, producing uh, certain enzymes. And basically if the liver is producing certain enzymes, then that means it is reacting to the drug or it's not reacting to the drug. So basically, they came up with something um, that they call biomimics, which are basically, it mimics, it, 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 it basically, oh, it's so hard for you to talk about this, but basically they've come up with something that mimics what a li- the liver does, so that you, you, they give the drug to these biomimics and the biomimics will will respond the way a liver does and it's far more accurate than what happens in an animal i know i know i know i know but so basically it's it's far more effective it's far more predictive of what's going to actually happen um in a human it's 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 much more fast reacting because it gives them kind of an instant result they don't have to like watch the animal and then test its liver to see right. what's going and on wait with its liver. for it to process yeah so um 
they uh, they also, I mean, they say that it's really difficult to interpret animal results, but this basically shows them exactly what it is they want to see. So um, there are the logistics still have to be worked out before the FDA can approve this. I guess they have to like, oh, okay. they have to test a hundred different drugs with this new technology before the FDA can approve it. But so far, mm. it looks really favorable, um, not just for ending um, animal research, but also for it really, really improving um, the human side of of drug testing. So it's wow, it's it, it looks is. it looks very promising. Of course, I feel like there's always some article about hey, we have this new thing, and then we either never hear about it again or whatever. But right. um, and I I can't. I can't do a better job of um, explaining this than, than that. It's 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 if it, it, once you even read it, you'll kind of be like, oh yeah, it's this thing, and it sounds kind of cool, but it's it's just you have to be a scientist to understand it. But it sounds really promising. So if you're interested, check out um, in the show notes. I'll have a link to that article and um, and check it out. Cool. So, yeah. So biomimics, you are making me purr. <laughs> Whatever you are. Yeah, whatever a biomimic is. Cool. Well, that, I mean, you know, I mean, that is one of the biggest arguments I always hear about um, animal testing is that we just really, truly don't need to do it. Yeah. Because we just really do have the technology. And that most animal testing, the results are sort of not helpful anyway, because you have to test on humans eventually anyway, because um, obviously something that affects a rat is not necessarily going to affect me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or something that doesn't affect a rat isn't necessarily not going to affect me. So it's like your your results from the study don't aren't even that helpful. Yeah. And appara- apparently, like like it's something like ninety percent, I think, of what they discover on animal tests ends up not translating to human studies. Yeah, because we're different. <clears throat> yeah. It's so dumb. Yeah. So dumb. So give me a hiss. What's making you hiss? <clears throat> oh, okay. So <laughs> this is so stupid. The San Diego mayor declared March SeaWorld Month. Oh, God. Right? How so, much was he paid to do that? I know. I know. I know. Well, the thing is, it's funny. They did it like mid March. So it's like, <laughs> it's like. They were like, I don't know. It, it really clearly is like a last minute push from SeaWorld mm-hmm. to be like, ah, because there's a couple things that are coming up. The Santa Monica State Assembly's, Assemblyman Richard Bloom proposed the Orca Welfare and Safety Act, which, which would make it illegal to have orca whales captive in California. Oh, wow. Which is like SeaWorld's worst nightmare. Yeah. And then... um. It would, you know, it would also, so it's also banning the use of orcas in performance shows. It's just, it would be, um, uh, it's, uh, so I think that they're really sweating because of this. And also Blackfish, obviously, has brought a ton of attention to SeaWorld and everybody is like anti-SeaWorld now because of that documentary. So mm-hmm. I think probably some of the speculation I've seen from folks is like the idea that SeaWorld is probably pressuring San Diego being like, look. If this happens to us, what do you think is going to happen to your zoo? Because the San Diego Zoo is basically one of the biggest attractions in San Diego. Mm, mm -hmm. It's one of their biggest draws. So I'm sure that they're just putting the heat on them being like, look, if you don't support us, you're next. And they're right. They are right. Yeah. That that is right. So I think that's probably where this is coming from. You're also right. There might might be some money changing hands around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um... Well, politicians totally. are bought. They're not made. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Totally lame and gross. Mm-hmm. And San Diego, you're making me hiss. <laughs> Yuck. So I will not be going to San Diego. So my next hiss is really kind of a purr, but also kind of a hiss. Um, I am purring about the people who are bringing attention to the thing that I'm hissing at. Um... Here's the thing. Um, I'll just read the headline first. Um, and this is um, probably the only time I'm going to read an article from ChristianPost.com. Um, <laughs> and I, I hope it's not the only time. <clears throat> um, 
it's so disgusting. While I'm reading this at ChristianPost.com, there's all sorts of um, video ads playing in the background. It's a really annoying sight. Uh, oh, really? All sorts of pop-ups and video ads that I have to mute. But like, I just saw a disgusting commercial for Outback Steakhouse and looking at a lobster tail. So uh, the headline of this article is animal rights activists create petition asking Pope to stop releasing doves. So first right, off, yes. although this is a hiss, um, wait, what is this commercial playing in the background? It it looks. Oh, I'm so sorry. What, what, how annoying. Oh, it's some sort of Citibank commercial, but it, I, I have that on mute. So it almost looked like it could be a daughter with some gay parents. Um, oh. But. I don't, um, I don't know what they're talking about. So anyway, um, and I doubt that's very doubtful as it's ChristianPost.com and Christians um, hate gays. But so anyway, not all Christians. Well, not all Christians, but as a as a group. Um, so unfortunately, that is their rep. I guess the Pope does this thing where he does the Angelus prayer in St. Peter's Square, the Vatican. Yeah. And then when he's done, he has these children release these doves. Well, here's the problem with that. Now, first off, if you ask me, it's like, where are they getting the doves? Why are they keeping them captive? Where yeah. are they releasing them to? Where do they get the doves? Why, That's do, the why do they feel like it's their place to release them? Well, hey, here, here, here's better. If you want to release them, just don't even capture them in the first place. But yeah, here's the, the other problem. Doves are not like native to this area they're also oh. used to being in captivity so these aren't doves that are like acclimated to being in the wild so it's not like you're releasing them to go back about their business you're releasing them into a foreign environment that they've never had to survive in so oh, these yeesh. doves don't know how to recognize or flee from predators because these doves have never have never had to make that distinction before of this bird will kill and eat me. That bird is harmless. You right. know, I should eat this. I should run from that. So um, apparently there's a YouTube video that's gone viral where it shows him. I shouldn't even laugh. This is disgusting. But it shows him releasing these doves. And then moments later, while thousands of people are watching, um, a seagull, and then later a, a large black crow comes along, and they attack the dove, and they try to eat it. And the dove ma made it, uh, got away, but, you know, no one knows the extent of its injuries and, you know, whether it, whether it died later or, you know, what happened to it. So they're basically, you know, um, what was it? Here, we, the, a quote from the article. One dove managed to break free from the seagull, losing a few feathers in the brawl. The crow had a better grip on the other dove, pecking the bird repeatedly. In the end, both doves got away, although the extent of their injuries wasn't immediately clear. So it's like, really? Really, Pope? This is this is what you want to do, you know, because it's a good photo op? Like, the, yeah, whole, I mean... the whole world can see what's happening after this. It's not making you look good. It's not in the best interest of the animals. So I'm hissing at the Vatican for doing this stupid practice. But um, secretly, I'm purring that the whole reason this is even being talked about is because animal rights activists create petition. Which, mm -hmm. by the way, that could be its own headline if this were like The Onion or something like that. Like, animal rights activists create petition. But um, yeah. where do they make this petition? This petition was, um, was done on uh, Care2, the petition site. Um, okay. And they, uh, they, at the time of this article, they, they'd already got 8,500 names and their goal was to get 9,000. So it sounds like they're doing really well and getting really close. And there's another pop-up ad that's, I have this muted. Why is this talking to me? Apparently on this, on this, on this, uh, website, even if you mute a commercial, they, after a while, they're just like, yeah, we're just not muting it. Yeah, You've we're been looking at the website long enough. Now you're going to have to hear... Cedric you can't Anderson possibly have meant that. We're just going to White back talking. So I'm going to close this because I don't want to hear this in my ear anymore. But um, yeah, so um, check that out. That's in our show notes. And um, animal rights activists, you, of course, for getting the word out there, you are making me purr. But the Vatican is making me hiss. What a shock. Yeah. Oh, what a shock. We just like the Vatican. I'm yeah. so surprised. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know, just, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't even get started on the Vatican right now. I'm just saying it's the fairest hiss of all time. Yeah. 
I mean, we could just in general have said, oh, we're hissing at the Vatican. No like explanation. Like with no further explanation. Just hissing. Just hissing yeah. at the Vatican. <laughs> just in general, just today. Just some just old man decided to start leaning out of his window and talking to the people on the streets below. You know, I could do that. I could do yeah. that. Doesn't make my block a country. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. You know, I once called, um, who was it? It was uh, Vonage. No, it wasn't Vonage. It was Time Warner Cable. Oh, Time Warner Cable. And I called them complaining because I came home. My Time Warner Cable was out, which meant that my Vonage was also out. And so I told them, and now I lied. I, pre I told them that I was borrowing my neighbor's cell phone and that I didn't know my neighbor. Of course, I knew my neighbor. I loved her and she would bring me food all the time. Um, and um, she was such a sweet lady, Josephine. Um, I love that name. Josephine. Oh, she was such a sweet, sweet thing. Um, and so I basically told them, I was being so dramatic. I'm like, you know, my cell phone is out at the same time. You know, I, I lied, lied. My cell phone wasn't. I'm like, my cell phone isn't working. And I come home and my cable's not working. Therefore, I have no connection to the outside world. Now, if I walked, if I came home and there was a, a burglar trying to rob me in my apartment, I have no way to call 911. I have no connection to the outside world other than to open my window and to scream at the people on the street below me. So like my only connection to the outside world now is to yell to the to the crowd of people down below me uh, out from my window like I'm Ava Perone and I'm like on the phone with Time Warner making this claim and I don't know. But you know what if you just complain making a wild Evita reference did they get it? Uh I don't know that they were like finding me fierce but if you <laughs> complain enough you will get Time Warner to just take mad money off your bill. Like, I will just call Time Warner. I'm like, nope, I'm not happy with the service you're giving me. I'm not paying for this month. Here's a fun oh, fact. Oh, I had that with AT&T for a while because I don't know what was going on, but it was like every other call was getting dropped. In, yeah. Like this happened for a few months. And uh, I've been with AT&T since I want to say 2001, like mm. a really long time. Yeah. And so I... um. Which I would literally just call and be like, I'm dropping every call. And they were like, uh, enjoy your free month of service. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, thanks, bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the funny thing. I don't even pay the Time Warner bill. It comes to Caldwell. And as part of our roommate agreement, he just pays that. That's his. But mm -hmm. I will still spend my precious time arguing with them on the phone. And then I'll text Caldwell. I'm like, hey, you got a free month of Time Warner. I wish I could take it off my rent or something since I'm literally saving money out of his pocket. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I just... I know how to get things on the phone. If I'm on the phone with someone, I will get my way. All it takes is patience. Yep. Yep. So, um, take us out with the Perlora. I can't believe we're at the end already. Okay. Um, I feel like that went by really today. quickly. Despite what? Our, yeah, we're, we're just trucking right along. Despite our lollygagging and our 20-minute intro there, we are actually moving right through this. A little bit of lollygagging. We bit. always lollygag a little bit. It's pretty classic. Okay, so I've got great news. Sort of goes hand in hand with your piss. With my piss? <laughs> <laughs> my piss? L listen, my piss really goes in hand. Did you see my face after I said You are beet red. You look like when we met the vegan zombie. You are beet red. And I, mean, I will say this. The vegan zombie doesn't know that, okay? Thank that you happened for your, before he saw me. Thank you for your generous overestimation of me, but my piss goes in hand, not hand in hand. It's really I more of a one-handed affair. But it's not his. It's per. That's why I said piss. Piss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> When I piss, it really only requires one hand. Because I was trying to say purr, but I was thinking his. <laughs> I guess oh. the alternative was was her, which just isn't as funny. <laughs> Not nearly as funny. I'm so glad it came out the Pisses other way. and hers. Pisses and, pisses and hers. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, it goes hand in hand with Ben's purr, which is that Congressman Jim Moran, a Democrat representing North Virginia, has represented has introduced bill hr 4148 the humane cosmetics act if passed this bill will prohibit animal testing in the u.s cosmetics industry and phase out the sale of cosmetics testing on animals and other countries oh my god insert humongous cheer so you guys go read about it you can check it out on a couple different sites of course but my girl Tashina over at Logical Harmony has, of course, covered it for all of us. And this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do, everybody. Write your congressman. Mm. 
it's very easy to write your congressman. There's almost always a contact email form on all their websites. Yeah. So figure out who your congressman is in. Go to their website or your congressperson, excuse me, because obviously it could be a woman. And you get to go to their, go to the contact form, write an email and say, please support the bill HR 4148, the Humane Cosmetics Act. Ask them to support it. Say that you want them to support that. We need to like email our tushies off. <laughs> because that's what we can do also share about it if you share like logical harmonies articles share it and tell people be like oh my gosh support this bill blah 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 i mean we can silly. really do this we can really do this did these are really our say, representatives did you really say congresswoman <laughs> what that is what you say women can't be congressmen <laughs> <laughs> you silly are you being silly <laughs> Keep folding your laundry, little woman. <laughs> Just li- yeah. <laughs> get back in the kitchen, Laura. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's okay to dream, but know your place. Jeez. <laughs> um, no, seriously, I'm looking at their website right now. I want to see if there's a way on here to notify Congress through um Wait, through what the- website are you looking at? Well, I'm just following the article that you had posted, and somehow... Oh, well, take... but you need to figure out who your congressman is. Yeah. you. It's not... We don't need to contact Jim Moran, unless you want to say thank you. That's fine. Go ahead. You need to contact your congressman for your district mm-hmm. and ask them to support the bill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, that's I... all based on where you live. I think you're probably... Um, well, the, the is... site took me to a site called govtrack.us. Oh, okay. Maybe that'll help you find out who your congressperson is. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's looking for my district, and it's logging me into Facebook. Okay, Ben. There's other ways to do it. No one's interested in why you're doing it this way. Okay. Um, we'll provide <laughs> some your people phone know who number. their congressperson is already because some of us already email all the time. We'll now connect a call to your representative's office for you. You provide your phone number, we'll call you, and then we will connect your call to the office of Representative Charles Charlie Wrangle, Democrat New York 13. Look over our suggested script on the right for an idea of what will happen next. All um, right, well, you can do that if you want to. I don't like to make phone calls, so I recommend. Going to your congressperson's website and emailing them. Uh huh. And for those people who just kind of don't know how to do that, like me, if you go to the article which we have listed in the show notes, uh, the Humane Cosmetics Act is a clickable link in the article. Um, do not click on the other one called the Safe Cosmetics and Personal Care Products Act. That is an that is an older bill requiring animal testing. Don't click on that one. But if you click on Humane Cosmetics Act, it will take you to a website called govtrack.us, and you can actually click on Call Congress right there. You can click on whether you support or oppose it, which is not you voting on it, but that will take you to a website where you just type in your address... And it will use that to figure out who your congressperson is. Um, So I'm doing that right now in real time. And it is putting me in touch with Representative Charles, a.k.a. Charlie, I guess he has a nickname, Wrangle, uh, Democrat, uh, New York 13. And it is giving me a, uh, asking me for my phone number. And it's telling me that they will call me. So I'm going to try this right now. I'm going to do this in real time. And let's, uh, okay, call me. All right, let's see. And I'm telling him to call me. Oh, I'm getting a call. Wait, one second. I want my ringer to actually be up so they can hear that I'm getting a call. All right. Uh, Is it on speaker? I can't hear. No, 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 my ringer was down, so I'm going to try it again. Uh, All right, so refresh this page. Put in my number again. And six four six three two. I'm not gonna call. Read out my number on the air. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, don't do that. Call me. We are dialing your number. Ah! One moment, please. Congress is calling me. <clears throat> and press one to be connected to the office of Representative Wrangle. Okay. Press two if you did not request this call. Okay. Hold on. 
All right. They are getting Representative Rangel on the line. It also gives me a suggested script here on the screen, so you know exactly what to say. I'm going to guess he's a smoker. He sounds so New York. Great. Hi, my name is Ben Strothman, resident of the 13th District. I support H.R. 4148, the Humane Cosmetics Act. Disregard my previous message. Maximum length recorded. To re-record, press 2-1. To approve as is, press pound. Pound. To make private, press 1. To include a fax, press 5. Why would I want to include a fax? Pound. I know who has a fax. Thank you for leaving your message to ask. All right, and there we go. That was pretty super easy. Oh, good. I'm glad it was easy. Yeah. So if you go to the article in the show notes and then just click on the Humane Cosmetics Act, it will actually take you right to a site where you can just plug in your info and it will connect you directly with... Or um, more simply, you can just Google, figure out who your congressperson is, and then contact them via their website, which is what I recommend because I think that it's just a little easier to actually write out an email. Well, actually, say everything that, you want. that site also can, takes you to a website for um, Charles Rangel, who is my New York... The, the website there I suggested... The website I suggested, which that's what I mean. There which, you go. Which clicks you, you go through to the website. website. It gives you the <laughs> option to call, and it says if you if you'd rather not, you can just go directly to their website. So yeah, nice. um, here I am connected with his Facebook, his Twitter, his YouTube. So I can actually Facebook Charles Rangel, tweet Charles Rangel, and contact him directly. So I'm also going to email him um, through his website. So I can basically get all up in his face about this issue. So definitely take a moment because it only took me a moment to um, to do that. Click on the uh, click on the article in the show notes and click on the Humane Cosmetics Act. Do not scroll further down the page and click on the Safe Cosmetics and Personal Care Products Act. Because well, those of you who read shouldn't yeah. have that problem. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Just it's the first it's the first link right there. And, um, yeah, just reach out and let your um, representative know how you want them to vote on this. Boom. So, who is this? Um, Jim Moran. Uh, let me mm -hmm. my screen here. So, Jim Moran, you are making us purr. Yes, sir. Uh, or you're making us piss. <laughs> Jim Moran, you are making us piss. Piss. That's funny. That it is, is funny. really funny that I said piss. That is really funny. I think we're we're gonna have to do um, hisses, purrs, and in pisses from now on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, a lot of them are kind of pisses sometimes. Yeah. I, you are making us pissed. There we go. So um, we have some listener mail today. Yeah. I'm excited about this. We do this. actually one of them. Was submitted to be a question for the live show, and I actually forgot to do it at the live show because I was so overwhelmed with how many great questions we had in the Ask It Basket. Oh, we got a lot of questions there. Yeah, sorry we didn't do this one at the live show. We kind of asked for questions at the live show as a backup in case no one asked questions in the Ask It Basket. But we got tons of questions. Yeah, well, we thought we would just be armed, and then we had a really full Ask It Basket, and mm -hmm. I just totally blanked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think it's because last... Here, when we did the live show, we passed around the ask it basket and we got like 0, 0.00 questions. So, no, that's not true. We got like two. Yeah, but they were all from Adam. We got two real ones. We got two real ones. Oh, did we? Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, basically, why don't we Instagram more? <laughs> and can you sing happy birthday to Moz? Yeah, exactly. But uh, other than that, Adam was like writing out all his own questions because he was vegan that week. Um, and uh, so this question is from Erica Kernut. Uh, Kernut. Yeah, that's my college roommate. Kernute. 
Erica Crudite. And uh, Laura, do you want to read her question? Boop, boop, boop. Did you tell people how they can reach us? Oh, no, I did not. Let me tell them that right now. Um, so you guys can contact us. Uh, basically, if you go to BigFatVeganRadio.com, all of our methods of contact are listed there. But you can always call us at 315-VEGAN-01. That's 315-834-2601. You can email us at BigFatVeganRadio at gmail.com. Tweet us at BigFatVegans. YouTube, we are youtube.com forward slash Big Fat Vegan Radio. And um, you can always Facebook us. Uh, our Facebook page is just Big Fat Vegan Radio on Facebook. So Erica asked us. Yes, this is my uh, this is my old booty, Erica. Erica, Erica. Um, <clears throat> right, her question is, the law firm where I work represents the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. Whoop, whoop. Um, that was my edit there. <clears throat> I have uh, had many conversations with folks, both vegan and non, who don't agree with Sea Shepherd's philosophy of protecting wildlife by any means necessary. What are your thoughts? Hmm. Thank you, Erica. Yeah. What do you think, Laura? Well, I am quite fond of Sea Shepherd myself. Um, I have a mixed... I have mixed feelings about um, the question just because, um, I don't know, I always have mixed feelings about that kind of work. For example, there are these, there's this group out here in the Bay Area, um, animal rights group, and they are constantly, they have a big campaign against Chipotle, hmm. which, um, fair enough, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. it's like having a campaign against McDonald's or anything else mm -hmm. it truly is it's all the same right hey chipotle is still murdering countless animals absolutely that's the point however i also support chipotle because they're offering vegan options uh -huh. and that's how i want to vote with my dollars and as much as i understand that we should probably you know just like boycott all the things i just don't think that it's um realistic uh, I don't think that it's um, the way to get more people to go vegan. I think the way to get more people to go vegan is to have more options, not to um, just act like you shouldn't eat at Chipotle if you're vegan. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I think one of the number one things that stops people from going vegan is lack of access and feeling like they don't have access to vegan foods. And the more that there's vegan food available the more people will go vegan and make vegan choices. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that. I've heard a lot of smack about Kathy Freston's uh, petition to McDonald's. A lot of people, she has a petition to McDonald's right now to add a veggie burger and to make the fries vegan. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are acting like this is a stupid, horrible thing she's doing. And I think it's a great thing that she's doing. I mean, truly, I get it. Yeah, I it get is it, funny. McDonald's. It's funny McDonald's that McDonald's just a... has nothing vegan except the apple pie on their menu. That's that's the know, only right? thing. I get it that McDonald's is not our friend. I get that. But I also think that if you could say to someone who's like, how can you be vegan? It's got to be so hard. And you're like, are you kidding? You can get lunch at McDonald's. If right. that's your response, right. I mean, think about that. That's exactly. more impactful. Exactly. Okay. So I had to catch 22 because I don't want to support McDonald's either. I get it. I get it. I'm saying I get it. Now, as far as Sea Shepherd goes, I'm not exactly sure where why I went there from there, but whatever. That's what my brain did. Um, this also falls into like sort of, and Ben, you can talk about this. Um, a lot of times protesters break the law. You know, Rosa Parks broke the law. Mm -hmm. And some people think that that's not the that's not the right thing to do. You know what I mean? They think you need to work within legal limits, yada, yada, yada. But I know that, like, what you did, stopping traffic, that was against the law. It was also law. fierce. It was totally fierce. You know, you got arrested because protesters get arrested for these things, mm -hmm. you know. So, I don't know. Um, I think for those who are willing and capable of doing it, that I support by any means necessary. As long as no one is harmed, I support it. If you want to break the law... That is your choice, and as long as you're not hurting anyone and you have good intentions, I get it. You know, I get that. I sort of, I get it. I don't know. What do you think? 
Um, I mean, I, I agree with everything that you said. Um, I, uh, you know, it is, it is, this might sound, uh, I'm just readjusting because it's that point where my knee is bothering me. Um, it, it, this might sound like, 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 like ironic, but it is your right to break the law. I mean, it is yes. illegal to break the yes. law. It is your right to break the law and suffer the consequences. You have that right. Um, the law won't support that right, but it's your right to act outside the law and pay the price. Um, here is here is how I look at it. Those people who do not agree with Sea Shepherd's philosophy of protecting wildlife by any means necessary, what if they were protecting children by right. any means necessary? What if they were protecting what if children were being rounded up and murdered and gutted and having their throats slit so they could bleed out while school children walked by and saw this? Um, you know, what if this is what were happening? You know, I think immediately these same people who are naysayers would immediately be like, oh, well, no, you have to protect these children. I don't care by any means necessary. And if that means you go out and you find the murderers and you stop them from murdering or you disarm them or take the guns out of their hand or sink their battleship, they would be all for it. Um, you know, we understood that Malcolm X did what he did by any means necessary to get his rights. I agree with that philosophy. Um, I agree with, you know, those people in the LGBTQ movement who, who, you know, go out and stop traffic and we do this, that, and the other, and sit-ins and civil disobedience to get our rights and to further our cause by any means necessary. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I think in this case... You know, the animals cannot advocate for themselves. The animals cannot, on their own, you know, get a lawyer. The animals cannot. They have they have no voice. They are completely unrepresented. And, you know, it, 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 if we don't do something like this, if we don't act up and, and take a by any means necessary approach, no one's going to take up for them and, and, and act on their behalf. So uh, I, I really don't see any other option. Um, so there's that. I do fully support it. Um, and, and again, uh, Sea Shepherd, it's not like they're out there murdering people or sinking someone's, you know, ship and then there's people dying and drowning at sea. Sea Shepherd goes to every, make, makes every effort to make sure that they are not, uh, harming any, any other humans. Um, you know, they're definitely causing a, uh, 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 destroying property and, and whatnot, but their Sea Shepherd does not hurt people. They absolutely make sure that they don't. So I see no problem with this. Mm hmm. I also got to say, it. my, um, my brother in law, my, my, my older sister, her husband, Mark, um, I went to see, um, uh, my niece's like ballet recital a couple, a year or two ago. And I, I see Mark, and he's it's, it's winter, so he's like wearing like a winter cap, and it says Sea Shepherd. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you know about Sea Shepherd? You support Sea Shepherd? He's like, oh, absolutely. I think they do fantastic work. Now, I don't think this is a man who does not eat fish. He's certainly mm -hmm. not vegan. But I love that even he can see the merit of what Sea Shepherd is doing, and he supports them. I think that was awesome. And for him, that might even be, I'm like, well, think, you know, think it through logically, you know, why do you support Sea Shepherd? Can you take it a step further and think about the implications of what they're doing and how that might speak to your eating choices? You know, I think for a lot of people, that's a possible, you know, foot in the door. I think we're, we're, we're a little all over the place with our answer to this, but, um, but, you we know, are it, a little, but I don't know. It does I really mean, beg just, other questions. Uh, I think that basically that we're okay with it. Yeah, definitely okay with it. Sea Shepherd, you are making. I mean, us... I do think that those kinds of protesting and that kind of um, direct action mm -hmm. is—it's a choice, you know. And if you're in a place where you feel like you can make that choice, and you're not hurting anyone, I, you know, I support it. You yeah, know, absolutely. I don't know that I could be at a protest where I couldn't actually, I'm at a place where I feel like I couldn't risk getting arrested. Um, but you know, some people can. Yeah. 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 
and it's a choice. You know, you know, you're making that, you know, you're risking that when you do it. But, um, yeah, also, I don't know. Sea Shepherd are, they're badasses. They are badass. I love them. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. I feel bad the year that, um, I relinquished my title as Veggie Prom Queen. Um, one of the guys, uh, David Koropkin won, and I love David Koropkin. He does such awesome work. But mm-hmm. he actually won over someone from uh, Sea Shepherd. Which oh, just really? shows how badass David Koropkin is. Um, right. <laughs> but I was just like, ooh, I don't know about this. You're going up against a Sea Shepherd guy. But I think the Sea Shepherd guy, because he's at sea, you don't know who he is as much. Right. But uh, David, yeah. everyone knows. So, um, true. yeah, so, uh, thank you so much to Erica for that, uh, message. That was, uh, I was really excited when I saw that question because I was like, this will give us something to talk about. And, um, the next, um, we also have an email from Laura. Um, I don't know how to say her no, last name. No, it's not name. an email. It was a Facebook post. I have no idea how to say her last a name face- either. I'm going to say Erying. Sure. But that doesn't sound fine. right. I, I, you know what? It looks like her last name is more like Laura Airthang. Like she is everything. <laughs> so I'm going to say, Laura, you are Airthang. <laughs> um, but she says, because she is Airthang. Laura Okay, Airthang. so it's really long. I don't think we need to read the whole thing. Let me just, let me, let me, let me uh, sure, recap. Sure. So I don't know if you guys remember, but we were, um, we were, had an episode and like, I was like, oh, someone posted this thing on our Facebook. Let me see if I can find it. And I was like, I can't find it. She must have deleted it. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You remember that? Okay. I remember. <clears throat> well, she basically said, um, I get the feeling the person who deleted her post and you were trying to find was me. Um, so she sort of basically resummed up what she said. Um, let me see. If I can just read a chunk of it. Okay. <clears throat> I said that I disagreed with Laura about PETA and their tactics. They were the reason I went vegan back in 2005 because of their wonderful Helping Animals 101 conference. They taught me how to be vegan, be an activist, and even how to protest. I had my first one there at KFC. I met Ingrid Newkirk and Bruce Friedrich along with other campaign managers, and they were the sweetest, most intelligent people I've ever met. While I do agree with you that fat shaming is a selfish, quote, I'm sorry, parentheses, appealing to vanity and cruel way to make someone go vegan. I don't disagree with them using mostly naked women, parentheses, and men to draw attention to animal issues. I feel if a person wants to put their body on display for a cause, what right do we have to say that they cannot? I'm a feminist and telling women to put her clothes back on makes you feel uncomfortable is wrong, especially if she's doing it for a worthy reason. These men and women are adults and they are doing it of their own free will. Plus they do feature men as well. Think of Ink, Not Mink campaign and the running of the news campaign. And Pam Plona was very successful in stopping cruelty towards the bull. Some of their campaign ads and tactics may be sexual, but they are not sexist. <clears throat> I'll also read this because it's very sweet. I did, deleted my post earlier because I thought it sounded like I was bashing on Laura. Laura, I didn't feel like you were bashing on me. You're very sweet. And I didn't know if I was really contributing anything original or constructive. You are, clearly. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep it, I keep making comments. I was afraid I would annoy you guys by writing a novel on your Facebook page, if anything. And again, I love you guys so much. I really appreciate all the episodes you make, even though you guys are very busy with your own lives. Mwah! Laura, you're very sweet. I'm just going to say, Laura, you, uh, not Laura, yes, uh, Laura Airhang. Airhang. Um, you are annoying me. <laughs> you are annoying our listeners. <laughs> you are annoying in general. And not only do I wish you had left that comment deleted, I would like you to take it a step further and delete your Facebook. <laughs> because how dare you? How dare you? Um, I don't know. I, I got nothing. Laura, I love you. You are adorable and a sweet thing. And I so love that you took the time to write us. So. Oh, yeah. Thank you. No, well, it's interesting. Well, it's good that you wrote back because I am a PETA hater. It's pretty clear. I'm. It's pretty obvious. So, um... It's it's hard it's hard for me to um it's hard for me to say because <clears throat> I don't necessarily want to be a PETA head hater because I do believe they do a lot of good work and I don't mean to um discount any of the good work that they do but um I can't uh 
be like behind them or supporting them myself because I don't agree with the way that they do things. And I, I totally hear you that, that if women want to be naked in the ads, that's their choice and yada, yada, yada. And that's the thing. However, they don't, they do little else than naked ads. It's pretty much everything is naked and they have the triple X website and all that stuff. And, um, <laughs> I, uh, I would like them to um, maybe do something, anything else, really, uh, <laughs> any other ad. So I'll, this is, I'll just tell my little story here. So I had had this sort of off and on feeling with PETA for a long time Yeah, because I like a lot of the stuff they put out. But I don't like all the, you know, I th- I'm like, oh, there is something really sexist about what they do. I don't like it. And I couldn't really put my finger on it. And I never really knew what to say, right? Okay, until this ad came out. And now, and that was it. It was the last straw. And now I'm done. So the PETA's Boyfriend Goes Vegan ad, since it originally came down, it's been edited down and it's a little tamer. So unfortunately, I couldn't find the original video. But everyone can just watch this one. <clears throat> it's, um, I mean, basically, it's, uh, they you're basically presented with a scene where you're supposed to think it's a victim of domestic violence. And then that's a joke. So mm-hmm. that's um, that's unforgivable as far as I'm concerned. That's not a joke. It will never be a joke. There's nothing funny about that. There's no reason to make that. Um, that has nothing to do with veganism. And the, the ad is completely ridiculous. And um, it's uh, it's horrifying. But the punchline is domestic violence. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's a punchline. Mm-hmm. When, that's some, when that's just something in our culture that's like completely... Oh, disrespected and it, I mean I don't even want to get into it I can't even get into it you guys can go watch all the TED talks about it because I can't even start talking about it but basically that was the last straw for me so after I saw that ad I was like you know what Peter that's it I'm done with you I'm done with you you're crazy and I uh you know I just think that they're contributing to rape culture is the bottom line mm-hmm. and they are supporting they're not supporting women in the way that they do things they don't I, I get what you're saying and I mean I don't mean to be I don't mean to not be sex positive. Obviously I'm sex positive and everyone can uh, do whatever they want with their own bodies and women can be naked if they want to, of course. I don't mean to not support that. But the way they're doing it is is not right. They're not painting women in the right light. They're not in a supportive fashion. It's in an objectifying fashion. And then to have this uh, domestic violence is hilarious ad like as, as, as if that has anything to do with veganism is just that was it so that was the straw that that I snapped and now I am just done I wash my hands until they until they release a formal apology about that ad explaining the uh, you know I don't know donating tons of money to domestic violence I will never forgive them I mean it's just I can't it's there's just nothing um, acceptable about that, and I will not support them. So, however, you know, it's the same thing with a politician. Sometimes politicians that you hate do a good thing here and there. It's I don't mean to discount that, you know, that's every now and then. The good things, I'm not going to act like they're not good, but um, overall, I'm not on board. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I think I think we we pretty much had the same conversation last time. So I think people know where you and I stand on the issue, you know. Um, just to reiterate for this episode, I mean, I, I also, I definitely agree with everything Laura said about that ad. I found it pretty horrific, um, horrific with a capital W, huh? Hey. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, one, one, one thing I appreciate about companies or organizations is when they're willing to just... I used to work for a bank, and this bank was going to be merging with a new bank. And what they said about the new bank that was distinct was that, hey, this new bank, if they have ideas, they just try them out rather than sitting around thinking, is it feasible? Is it feasible? For example, they had a mobile ATM, like it was an AT, like a food truck version of an ATM, and they would roll up to concerts and stadiums and whatnot and events. So that their ATMs had a presence at all these places. So like, hey, here's the, here's an ATM right in the middle of the parking lot. Come use us. And that was like an idea someone had. And rather than thinking about it in the test tube, they just tried it out. So I, I love when someone is like, hey, rather than thinking, is this the right thing? Is this going to offend people? I like the impulse to just try something and see if it's right. In this case... It definitely missed the mark. I mean, is that going to appeal to one person out there? 
perhaps maybe there's someone out there who saw that ad and thought, oh, I want to be a stallion in the sack. So let me go vegan. Honestly, watching that commercial, I I don't know, maybe I'm the wrong audience, but I watched that video and I'm like, I don't see how this is going to make some dude think, oh yeah, I want to really nail my woman, so I'm going to go vegan. I, I don't think it was even effective. Yeah, I want to beat up my, I want to be so sexually proud that, that I'm going to beat up my girlfriend. Right. I, I, I don't even think it would it, it would have been effective at, at, at what its intent was. I feel like the whole thing missed the mark so much. And I, I don't know whether PETA... Where they stand on that, I don't know if PETA ever looks. I don't know if they ever look back on anything they do and say, "Yeah, that was that was sort of uh, a miss. That was a hit. That was a miss." I don't know if they do that. I don't know if they've ever had any kind of apology or if they just stand by everything they do and say, "Well, we did what we did. And we're not offering any apology." I don't know, and I would love if they did offer an apology for that video because I did find it offensive. I, I personally am not willing to write them off as a whole just because I feel like for such a long time they have been doing so much to put us on the map and to advance our cause that, you know, as an organization, I still stand by them, um, though I often find myself in disagreement with them. Just yeah, you know, I also have had a lot of fights with them on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Just because they always say... Um, <clears throat> I've had I've seen them tweet a lot that they'd be like, um, say that Michael Vick shouldn't be allowed to be around dogs the way abusers are not allowed to be around children. And the argument I have with that is that that's not true. We do let abusers be around children in this country, and mm -hmm. that's a problem. So they're not supporting that right message there. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, absolutely. They're spreading misinformation. It's a problem. Yeah. Like that's not pro women. That's not on the woman's side to act like. Things are because that's what it is what people think. The average people do think that's the way it is, and that's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. And they're not helping. They're not helping women by doing that by making it seem like we are on women's side when it comes to these issues. Because as a culture and at court, we're not. So <clears throat> anyway. I think the, the bigger issue that I would like to make here is that to be vegan is to be pro woman, and that really I hope that's not being overlooked here. And that's it very sounds, sweet. What's that? Ben. It's very sweet of you to say but, that. Right, but I think that's sort of the that's sort of what's what's driving Laura, you know, I'm not driving you crazy because that would be, be to imply that, that that point of view is crazy, which I <laughs> I think is another thing that people just think, "Oh, well, just these women they're so emotional." I mean, <laughs> it's, that you can't be pro vegan and then also be sexist or be anti woman, you know. Or, I mean, you can be. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's your right to be a whole lot of things, but like that's sort of what we're talking about here. That, that's like the bigger argument that we're making. And it sounds to me like what Laura is 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 upset with is that it seems to it, it seems to you that th that that is being overlooked in this argument. Like we are, it's kind of like when people say, "Oh, you care more about animals than you do about people." Well, in yeah. this case, this sort that's of that's how seems, it feels. Absolutely, this does yeah, seem yeah, yeah. actually like evidence that they're they're choosing the animal. They do argument. act like that. That is yeah. a problem with them. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um yeah definitely um you know it it sounds like this is a conversation always worth having and um you know obviously I know I've had for, you know I've had um I've had this conversation with Red a couple times I know she's always felt like she'd love to see like a panel of people talking about the uh, PETA because mm -hmm. everyone has all these different opinions and I would be on that panel I would yeah. be happy to be on that panel yeah yeah and I would be eating popcorn watching that panel yeah can you imagine me like having an argument with the uh, I don't know. There's really great, wonderful vegan people who support PETA, and it bums me out mm. because mm. I just feel like they do send the wrong message when it comes to uh, women sometimes, and it's it disappoints me. It really does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the bigger argument is how can we get PETA to um, to to. Well, be then the other thing is, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to rip, cut you off. Mm -hmm. But you know how when like it's kind of like when you know like there's like if you have like a conservative president and everyone's uh, criticizing the conservative president, then you have a liberal president and people don't criticize him just because he's liberal and it's like no, yeah, they yeah. need to be criticized too. Yeah, it's the exactly. same thing with this. Exactly. I'm not going to not criticize PETA just because they're vegan and they have the vegan message. I am going to criticize them because I do think they're off when it comes to their message about women, and mm. I'm going to point it out and I'm going to say it and I'm and I'm not going to hold back. I think that's very well said. And you're right. Thank it's, you. It's exactly the same with Obama. I mean, like, you know, having – I'm not going to list all my allegations against Obama here because I don't know well, we enough don't need about to. it to back it up. And we don't need – yeah. But, um, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. You know, we, you know, we should – just as you know, we encourage our listeners to hold us accountable for the things that we say. Peter should Peter should be no different. 
I think the mm-hmm. bigger argument is how can we educate PETA on women's issues and, you know, and, and show them the implications of, of, um, of their message. Yep. Yeah. I do try to, I do, you know, I, I, I do get in those arguments with them on Twitter all the time and they, um, they seem to not know what I'm talking about, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that so may very well be the, be the problem. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, well, it's true. Not everybody's focused on um, those issues. And it's unfortunate they really need to have someone that is maybe uh, has more knowledge on the set on the subject be around. They're going to be making those claims, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know Mm -hmm. if they want to be spreading that message. You know, it's like, I don't know. They need to be. There's a difference between objectifying and sex positive. That's mm-hmm. all there is to it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think anyway. I think we've uh, hammered that point home. Are Gosh, we, no kidding. I think we're ready to wrap this bad boy up. Anyway, thanks, Laura Airhang. Airhang. <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna make a quick shameless plug here. Uh, I don't know if I have. Oh, you know this... what I should say though. Let me say this really quick. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, and thank you, Laura. Really, truly. Um, and I won't. I'm not gonna lie. Peta's um, meet your meat is. What did it for me, ultimately? You know? I mean, I saw Pita's Meet Your Meat, and I never ate, and I haven't eaten meat since I saw Meet Your Meat. So, mm-hmm. they deserve full credit for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Um, so, I have a shameless plug. I have a shameless yeah, big plug. News. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I had this news to announce last time, because this no. is sort of a new development. I don't think so. This is a new development. Um... Uh, Monday nights, if you are a New Yorker or if you are New York adjacent, uh, come see Honey the Bronx. I finally have a weekly gig that does not involve serving murdered animal carcasses to people. <laughs> of course, I am no longer at the Lucky Chang's. Woo! Um, and uh, I now host karaoke uh, on Monday nights at 930 at a lovely little place in the uh, Lower East Side called Baby Grand. It is at 161 Lafayette Street, just below Grand. It might sound to you like, oh, I don't know where that is. Middle of nowhere, Lower East Side. I don't know about that girl. You take the N or the R or the whatever or the 6 to, um, you know, the yellow line, the N or the 6 to Canal Street. And you just walk up. You know, it lets you off right at Lafayette and Canal. Just walk up Lafayette. Not even two whole blocks, and there we are on the right side, right before you get to Grand Street. Um, so 9.30 on Mondays, I'm there till about midnight, um, so come check it out. Um, you know, it's it's an awesome chance to watch me shake my shimmy. I do numbers, I sing songs, I do Mad Libs karaoke, um, which is a lot of fun. And the uh, bartender, Adrian, she is vegetarian with vegan leanings. And, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool uh, night, so come check that out. Um, just to remind I want to go. Yeah, you could come next time you're in town. And um, just a reminder to uh, our listeners, if you are not already a member, you can uh, go to BigFatVeganRadio.com and click on Support Us for a list of ways that you can help us do what we do. Uh, some that don't even cost anything. Um, you know, but, uh, if you want to become a member, we have some awesome perks, you know, you can either do a one-time donation or a recurring donation, and, uh, you can see a list of, uh, different levels of perks and benefits, like secret shows or movie nights or Google Hangouts, so, uh, definitely check that out. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I stepped off the script. I was going to say shop at Vegan Cuts, everybody. Oh, yeah, that's another awesome way to support us. I was just trying to get the link. That's why I just was distracted. I'm sorry. Everyone, shop at Vegan Cards. The links are on our our website. You can um, just click on them, and they take you right to the marketplace, and it's how you can support us. I didn't even think that that would really help at first. I thought, oh, every year we'll get a couple of pennies. No, we were getting emails just the other day like, hey, we got another couple of bucks. Oh, we got another couple of bucks. So, like, the dollars are actually pouring in from Vegan Cuts. So, you guys, keep shopping. Yeah, please keep shopping through those links. It really helps us a ton. It really, Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's, gosh, I mean, 
I try to do it too. It's so funny. If I'm going to buy something from Vegan Cuts, I have to. I want to click through our link. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah, yeah. It's like if you're going there, please just go to our website first and click through us, and it's a great way to help us out. Absolutely. Also, they have got some really cool deals going right now, so check out their website. And if nothing else, go to their website and get the Go Veggie Vegan Parmesan. You will thank. Yeah, me. yeah. So but good. they have a couple like awesome things right now. Anyway, mm-hmm. okay. So you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Ben is at Honey LeBronx and I am at Laura Yaz. We are the same on both platforms. You can also follow Big Fat Vegan Radio on everything by searching for Big Fat Vegan Radio. On YouTube, I am youtube.com slash Laura Yaz. You can watch my show Three Minutes About a Movie. And you can watch Ben's YouTube channel at thevegandragqueen.com where you can learn how to make delicious vegan food. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, of course, you can always buy some of my famous medieval oil at medievaloil.com. That's M-E-D-I-E-V-A-L oil.com. I mm-hmm. still have to look up the word every single time I uh, I, I try to look it up. Um, <laughs> Do and, you? And uh, I'm trying to think of medieval oil use for this episode. Um God, I feel like I've mentioned so many, and yet there's so many still. Um, Phlegm. You can get rid of phlegm. Just put a couple of drops of medieval oil in some orange juice and just swish that around and gargle it and drink that, and uh, it helps you get rid of phlegm. Oh, that sounds great. For our singers out in the audience, that's a great way to Singers. 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 Um, Also, um, our musical guest for the episode, um, Laura, you could tell us about this. Where did you find this song? Uh, He actually contacted us. Awesome. And said that uh, he had a few new uh, songs that he was hoping we could feature, some animal-friendly songs. And so I said, sure, send us your favorite. So this is going to be Nothing With a Face by Freddie Clark. Awesome. Thank you, Freddie. I'm excited to hear it. So just Yeah, a- thanks for contacting us. Thank you, Freddie. And just a uh, shout out to, of course, the Michael Heron at michaelheron.com. Uh, thank you to Michael for our uh, theme song and Kelly Huffine for our logo and cartoon. Um, Kelly42fox.deviantart.com. And we would love to thank our Big Fat Vegan Radio intern, Miss Madison Marie, for yeah, Madison. all of our whoop, whoop. help. Thank you so much, Madison. We adore you and everything that you do for us. Totally. And, um, yeah. Well, I think that's it. I think so. All right. That's all we got today for Big Fat Vegan Radio. Please subscribe to us through iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. It's extra helpful if you can leave us an awesome rating and a glowing review. And be sure to let us know what you thought of this episode on our Facebook page or send us a tweet or leave us a voicemail or leave us a comment at BigFatVeganRadio.com. We would love to hear from you guys. Yeah. So, oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Ben. Wait, did we talk about the... um? Did we talk about the, th- uh, the, oh, shoot. Um, what? That we forgot to. Oh, my God. I swear this happens every time. We forgot to tell him one last thing. Go, Go vegan! vegan! Woo! Woo! Bless us, O Lord, in these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Kill anything before I say grace. I eat nothing's child, nothing's brother, nothing's boyfriend, or significant lover. Nothing's newborn, nothing's kid, nothing's mother who got what her mother did. Nothing, nothing with a face, nothing. I hate to waste, nothing, nothing with a face. I don't kill anything before I say grace. I'm Swan Dang from Vietnam. Got a vegan house called Lack of Lamb. I eat nothing's kidney, nothing's liver, nothing's fingers slowly simmer. Nothing's body baked in honey. Nothing's ass that's grown for money. Nothing, nothing with a face. Nothing. I can't stand the taste. Nothing. Nothing with a face. I don't care.
plain white wrapper in your dining room. Foul mouth. I eat nothing's lame. Foul mouth. I eat nothing's spice. Foul mouth. I eat nothing's wing. Foul mouth. I just clicked on, if you went to the article, I just clicked on the Safe Cosmetics and Personal Care Products Act. It made it a clickable link, and it took me to a site where no, I No, it can, sounds like that's very step-by-step -step and very helpful, yours. It was really easy. You don't want to do a phone Look at this. I'm now getting email. a call. Hang on one second here. I'm actually getting a call now from them. Let me Seriously? answer. Seriously? Yep, yep. One second. Use your script. Ooh, put it Here on we speaker. go. Press one to be connected to the office of Representative Wrangel. Done. Put it on speaker. Oh, speaker. Here we go. We're on speaker. Oh my god, I'm excited. I'm excited too. I think you're probably gonna get voicemail. Cool. Oh my god, he's so New York. He sounds like he's talking through a stoma. Hi, my name is Ben Strothman. I'm a resident of the 13th District. I support H.R. 1385, the Safe yep. Cosmetics and Personal Care Ready Products to Act. Re-record, re press 2, 1. Re-record, you said the wrong number, 4148. What? Re-record, you said the wrong number, 4148, H.R. 4148. Mm, here it's H.R. 1385. Here it's H.R. 4148. All right. Well, here it is. There's two different things. I think it might be. I think it might have a different number in New York. Ah, this isn't the message I want to leave. Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna try this again. It's really easy, folks. It's a lot easier than this when you. Yeah, do it's it. a lot. You guys, Ben's a moron. I, I, it's give. It's it's giving me a different. Okay, one second. One second. Hang on. Hi, my name is Ben Stroth, and I'm a resident of the 13th District. I'm calling to see if I can get your support for H.R. 1385, the Safe Cosmetics Personal Care Products Act. Maximum length recorded. To re-record, press 2, 1. To approve as is, press pound. Pound. This is why we email everybody. Press 1. To include a fax, press 5. 
include a fax. Send. Thank you for leaving your message to act. Oh my god, don't give people eight seconds to leave a message. That's why you gotta write an email, everybody. Yeah. Well, there is also a And click- that's not it, it's the Humane Cosmetics Act. I don't know what your what your link is doing. It's there, really there is me. the Humane Cosmetics Act and there is the Safe Cosmetics and Personal Care Products Act. Okay. So I think this thing has two different things that it's called, depending on who's, yes. who's looking at it. But there is also a link here. No, no, Ben. Oh, what? my God. You totally. Okay. Mark that you're editing this out because we need to edit this out. Okay. The Safe Cosmetics and Personal Care Products Act is a bill that would require animal testing. You did the wrong one. That's the wrong one. There's two bills right now on the floor. Ah. You just told him to support the wrong one. How do you know that that's not where I stand on the issue? Why don't you listen to me? Because I'm clicking through this article and it's taking me to the thing. Come on. Yeah, but you're clearly looking at the wrong bill when you're talking to him. I told you. Ah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, I'll edit this out one second here. Representative introduced March 21st, blah, 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 blah. All right, this, I th- yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Where were you getting that number from? The bill was introduced to committee on March 8th. It's currently at the same stage as another as bill. As another bill that, that would, would require, require animal, animal testing. Oh, um, I clicked on the wrong one. Why aren't you listening to me? 